Hi guys, this is Jess with This Tiny Schoolhouse and today we're going to be talking about math for a living education from Masterbooks. This is a Charlotte Mason style math curriculum. Um, it goes through using math if you are very focused on a living education. And for those of you who don't know, a living education or living books, that kind of thing, is focused on not just a sit down curriculum, it's using those practices and those skills and that knowledge in everyday life. So for it to be a living education, you aren't just sitting down and filling out just useless, boring work, you're not, or not necessarily boring, but you're not just sitting down and filling out busy work. There's no busy work at all in living education. It's just practical work. So this curriculum is not our main curriculum. Um, we actually use Singapore for our bulky lessons. We don't follow a strict Charlotte Mason style. Um, we just kind of pepper it in because I love the ideology behind it. But it doesn't really fit my daughter's learning style or my teaching style very well. So we kind of pepper it in when we see fit. Um, I saw this math curriculum and thought it would be such a fun way to add just some extra math. Um, like I said in my last video, we don't do every subject every day. We do, uh, we do a little bit of every subject every day if we can, but we try to focus on a heavy lesson in math and then if we do a heavy lesson in math, we'll do a light lesson in reading. If we do a heavy lesson in reading, we do a light lesson in math. So this works really well as a filler or even part of a morning time kind of thing. It's not a very big bulky lesson, but it's still packed with full, packed full with information. Um, so today we're gonna do the very first lesson straight out of the book. I thought that that might be beneficial because we, it, so you can see what it's like if you are brand new opening the book. I'll also do a flip through of the book um, before I do the lesson. So I'll put in the I cards or the description down below where you need to skip to if you just wanna see one or the other. Um, we start off with making a place value village, which is really cute. Um, there's little houses that you cut out and then each, the ones can only live in the ones house, the tens can only live in the tens house, hundreds only live in the, ten, the hundreds house. Um, this works really good for us because Emma has had some issues with place value, so this kind of hands-on visual will be really good for her. Um, we also have these manipulatives. We just got these off of Amazon. Um, we use them in Singapore as well. Um, after you get that situated, um, there's also a place value chart. Um, this is what the place value chart looks like. I will go through and laminate this. One thing that I do not like so far about the master books is that the serrated edges do not actually help it rip out. It was extremely difficult to get those pages out of the book, which was really disappointing because it's hole punched and everything, and it's like thick, sturdy paper, so I thought it would be really easy to rip out. It's not, um, which is annoying. But aside from that, this curriculum seems like it's gonna be perfect for morning time, perfect for review days, perfect for um, kind of a lighter load of math. So I'm gonna go ahead and go through and do a flip through, and then you guys can do the first lesson with us. So here's the curriculum as it stands, math, for a living, math lessons for a living education, level three. Um, this is printed by Masterbooks. You open it up and it's just really pretty. It's pre-hole punched with um, serrated edges. But like I said, the serrated edges do not go over very well. Um, you've got your copyright and all that on that side. And then you have your scope and sequence pages, which go into depth of some of the things you'll be learning about. Roman numerals, multiplying, dividing, adding, subtracting, word problems, that kind of thing. Pretty typical for a second to third grade. Um, using this course features course description, course objectives, teaching mathematics as a living subject, the manipulatives that you might need, grading subjective assignments, a little grading scale there, using everyday items as manipulatives, saying that you don't need to have things like this. To make this work, you can use beans, you can use whatever you need. And then it breaks down each lesson, um, what you need to do on each day. So you've got 
lesson for day one, week one, day one, you read lesson one, which is on pages 15 to 16, and you complete lesson one, exercise one, whoops, which is on page 17. And then it also gives you a due date, check mark that it was done, and a grade section. So if you need to keep track for your records, every lesson is done that way. So you could do more if you wanted in a week, you could do less than you wanted in a week, completely up to you. Um, and there's tons of fun lessons. Then you have this special puzzle over here. I don't know if these are sprinkled throughout, but we didn't do this today. Um, we just read the review of place value, odds and evens, counting by twos, fives, and tens. Um, to me, this lesson had absolutely nothing to do with counting. And um, it seems like it's kind of a, just a cool story to keep them interested in what's going on. Um, I don't know if it gets more more math things going on later, but it was still started out, so it sounded like it started out to be a pretty cute little story. Um, then we did less exercise one, day one, get your place value village and place value counting mat, both found in the manipulative section in the back. There is a manipulative section in the back, I'll show that in a minute. Um, and then your place value counting mat is in there as well. And we followed the instructions to count to 100. Um, counting to 100 is obviously something that Emma's been able to do for a while. So like I said, it is a very easy thing. You can see some of the exercises coming up with some copy work. Um, even odd. That kind of thing. Skip counting. And we've got our story again on lesson two. Got some clocks going on here. Um, now I'm going to skip further ahead. So you're doing some division. Some Roman numerals, that kind of stuff. Multiplication review. This is much, much later in the book. Optional review activities. Looks like it gives you some fun stuff throughout the book to do. And then we have our manipulatives here. This is a list of manipulatives it comes with. We have obviously already printed out the place value village and the place value counting map. Um, here is a hundreds counter. Just cut those out. Hundreds chart, blank hundreds chart, multiplication facts for copy work, division facts for copy work, multiplication chart, special puzzles answer key. I guess there are special puzzles sprinkled throughout the book. And then here's the solution manual. Um, each page in color still has all the answers for the teachers, which is always nice. I think that's it. I think these go to the end of the book. Yep, that goes to the end of the book. And then that's it. Um, it says that this is recommended for grade three or seven to nine. Um, we are going in not having completed level two, one and two from Math Lessons for a Living Education. So I don't know if that will affect how we do this one or not. But so far, after doing the first lesson, I love it. I think it's really cute and we will definitely be continuing using it. Um, now we're gonna go ahead and sit down and do the first lesson. Like I said, it's just reading and then counting to 100s using the place value village that she made. She drew little ones that live in the one house Tens live in the ten house, dogs and cats, and you don't use the thousand spot yet, but she went ahead and did it.
Charlie wiggled with excitement. The very next week, they were going to fly on an airplane with mom, dad, and their baby sister, Ella, all the way to Lima, Peru. There. Excited did not even begin to describe how Charlie felt. Mom and dad had told them that they were all going down to a children's home to meet Natalia and Harrow. Dad was going to spend the summer, which is winter in Peru, helping build a clinic close to the children's home. He was also going to finish the last wing of the home. Five, six, seven, eight, nine. She's going through the door. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, did you say take those off? Okay, I'm coming. Yeah, take those off. Nine, ten. ten. Put those back. Mm -hmm. Ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty-one, twenty-two, twenty-three, twenty-four, twenty-five, thirty-six, thirty-seven, thirty-eight, thirty-nine, thirty-nine. Don't do that. Twenty-five. Put them over one at a time, please. Twenty. 